Podcast giant Joe Rogan and Real Time's Bill Maher recently discussed how Disney, quote, leaned into woke and has taken it too far. Here it is. Corporations in America now um, are... They're leaning know, in. Or what? They're leaning into woke. <laughs> Hardcore. They're, they're, they're petrified yeah. of some kind of backlash. And look, I'm glad they are progressive thinking. Of course, like with everything on the left these days, they just take it too far. Last week, in an opinion piece for the New York Daily News, legal scholar Tom Lynn criticized Megacorp's newfound interest in progressive politics as a natural consequence of the legal expansion of corporations' political stakeholders. He writes, quote, whether the rise in corporate social activism is right and good is subject to legitimate debate and discussion. But what is less debatable is its ascendancy and one of its core roots, the decades-long legal expansion of corporate political power. It is ironic that many of the politicians who now decry woke businesses interfering in politics are also the ones who worked so hard to welcome businesses into our political process in the past. Joining us now to discuss is Katie Halper. She's the host of The Katie Halper Show and co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast. Welcome, Katie. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So how do we tease this out? Because I think substantively, you know, as people on the left, we agree with a lot of the substantive pro uh, politics here. But do you agree that we should have some skepticism because of the relationship between uh, corporate power and their involvement in kind of cultural politics? Yeah, I mean, I think we should always have skepticism when we're dealing with corporations and when it comes to corporate power. I think that... Um, Bill Maher and Joe Rogan's uh, skepticism here seems a little misplaced. I'm not sure why they're so frustrated. I'm not sure what leaning into wokeism means, really. I think these are kind of buzzwords that I think do really well. But I don't know what their critique is. I don't see a really substantive critique in this case. It seems like a kind of lazy that they're leaning into their own version of like buzzwords themselves. Mm. Well, I don't know. I think they're pointing to something pretty real. I mean, the need for right, so many corporations to take a stand or and a, a cost free stance, a just a, a signaling that we're anti racist, we're progressive on gender and orientation. We're, you know, this kind of like like what Disney's doing, like what other companies are doing. Uh, I, I'm a lot of conservatives feel like you know, they're Disney's demonizing doing. half their customers. And it's it's that sort of thing that annoys them. Uh, I mean, I think that's what they're and then obviously, Bill Maher and Joe Rogan have both been, you know, heavily, heavily, heavily criticized by the mainstream media for just kind of pointing out some of the excesses of the kind of woke ascendancy. So they Right. I just don't think that, that, that this critique is that coherent. And Bill Maher himself is like, it's good that they're pro-gay. It's good that they support gay, uh, you know, they, they have gay days at Disney. So I guess I just don't really see what his problem is in what Disney's doing. I think that they're being a little bit lazy and just plugging this into a like pre-existing formula where, oh, people are leaning too into into wokeism or there's cancel culture. And I get that because they've both been kind of the subject of cancel culture campaigns. But I just think in this case, uh, it's it's not that uh, their analysis isn't that applicable to what's happening with Disney. I don't think it's weird or wrong for Disney to fight back against this don't say gay bill. What's funny sure. also is, sorry, go ahead, Ken. Well, you know, I, I mean, one one um, kind of counter to that is, you know, whenever these companies get into this culture battle and to the morality battle, I would say what we do find is that the company, you know, like, for example, decades ago, it was all about being more conservative and religious and catering to that conservative crowd. And when they did that, there were actual real consequences for people that did not fall in that moral category, you know, what they would consider to be moral, righteous and good. People lost their jobs. People were demonized. People were, you know, you know, ostracized and isolated. And so we're maybe seeing something kind of similar to that now that we're moving into a different framing of what is moral, good and righteous. And, you know, so now we're seeing, for example, with Disney, um, like people losing their jobs. Right. If they're not in the same if they're not aligned with what they consider to be moral. I mean, do, do you see potentially a problem with with that? I mean, I guess that to me, it, it just seems like a bit of fear mongering. I mean, I think that corporations have outsized power that we see them exercise every day when it comes to, I mean, labor unions or workers rights. Um, I think that if there is some kind of ideological uh, warfare that we see, we can talk about that. But I don't think we've seen that so far. 
in the case of Disney, at least, right? This I mean, is just my- Disney coming out against a a very ironically uh, ironically given that there's so much right wing um, criticism of of Disney leaning in to wokeism and cancel culture. I mean, this is a very cancel culture ish bill, right? It's literally canceling speech, and I think that we see uh, time and time again that people like right wingers like DeSantis who decry cancel culture are kind of the snowflakes when it comes to to free speech in the way that they try to live. Yeah, it and that's why I, I don't support, uh, support the bill either. But I, I think the thing that bugs me most is the hypocrisy. And I don't want to hear from Disney or whoever else about, you know, how disturbed they are by this when they turn a blind eye to similar or extremely worse abuses of gay people and other minorities' rights in in China and other places. And it's just like, what do you, you, you don't care at all about that. You, you refuse to talk about it. You will, you will, you know, abide by every authoritarian government dictate with ease, but you're mad about this. It just, it seems. Yeah, stupid. but that's, that's not their critique. Me. I wish, I mean, I wish that were that's the critique, critique that we were hearing on, on the Joe Rogan show. But unfortunately, I think this chicken and the egg issue that Katie is pointing to is right. You know, we have these canceled bills coming out of the right that the left is responsi- responding to. We have, to Kim's point, this longer trajectory of Disney's history as a company that was uh, holding up more conservative values and conservative interests for the majority of its time on the planet. If you ever want to have a good time on YouTube, go ahead and Google race. Disney clips and see all oh, yeah, the stuff yeah. that they used to put out that they have stripped from those those cartoons. And, you know, Robbie, you and I were talking during break earlier about, you know, the halcyon days of the 90s in our youth. And I was listening to some a better Disney. Time. <laughs> a better, a better time. time. And the I was peak listening, of human civilization. <laughs> Sorry, go I was ahead. listening to some, some Disney soundtracks, that, including the Hercules soundtrack recently. It's such a great channel And thinking they would never allow this today. Why the not? Idea, they, as much as people like Ben Shapiro and all of that crowd put Western Greek and Roman civilization on a pedestal and say, oh, everything should be like white and stowed and austere, even though that's not how it looked in the day, to have the muses be like five black gospel singers and to have wow. half the music be choir music. And then also. It would be to, canceled by the left, is what you're saying. No, no, no. I think it would be canceled by conservatives who would say that there's no, a pollution uh, of, of Western uh, right. history oh, and I culture. No, uh, Moreover, no. they rhyme gospel truth. With sweet vermouth, wow. alcohol, and kids, guys. <laughs> My God. That, I guess. Anyway, things have changed a lot, and it, it, the inconsistency. I, agree, I think we all agree is part of the main the problem here, and a lack of focus. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Katie. Thank you. We can agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have more rising after this. <laughs>